here with Tom Loeffler. Now, Tom, we're here for Carlos Quadras, who's the former super flyweight champion. He held the WBC title. He wants that rematch with Roman Gonzalez. Gonzalez is also on that uh, fight card. It's a co-feature. Why do we continue to put together great undercards when we already have a great main event? You know, it's a, it's a tremendous main event, but uh, our philosophy has always been for every uh, Golovkin show, we want to put on strong uh, a strong show for the entire fans and uh, you know there's been no better combination of boxing to having uh, Triple G and uh, Chaco Tito on the same show Chaco Tito's in a very tough matchup it's uh, his mandatory fight against uh, Rungo Vasai from uh, Thailand and uh, having Carlos Quadros on there Ryan Martin on there uh, Ryan Martin's fighting uh, P.B. Cruz um, Quadras fighting uh, Carmona from Mexico City and uh, whenever you get a matchup uh, Two big punchers in the middleweight division. The two top, clearly the two top middleweights uh, in their division. That's uh, that, that's what the fans are looking forward to. Assuming that Gennady Golovkin is the victor on March 18th, can I suggest another fight, another undercard cup fight? That Japanese sensation flyweight, Nau uh, Inu. Yeah, yeah. yeah in a way, no, in a way he's a <laughs> tremendous fighter, and uh, you never know, but he would be a great showcase as well. Uh, he's kind of building up that following where people are hearing about him people haven't necessarily seen him fight but uh he's kind of uh building up that that uh that interest in, and uh, he would be a tremendous addition as well to one of the other cards. Now, as I was talking to Carlos, he had something interesting to say. We were talking about Chavez versus Canelo. He says Chavez will be the victor. Chavez is going to knock out Canelo Alvarez. Now that leaves Gennady Golovkin without a dance partner. Is it possible if Chavez is uh, the winner of that fight, will we see Triple G versus Chavez Jr.? We tried to make the fight with Chavez two years ago um, you know Gennady would have moved up to 168 to fight him uh, would have been a great fight at that time but uh, you know there were some political issues with the uh, promotional uh, contract that uh, Chavez was in so uh, that didn't happen at the time uh, I think whoever wins that fight between uh, Canelo or Chavez uh, and then if Gennady is successful against any Jacobs it's going to be a, a huge uh, matchup look if Chavez can beat Canelo all of a sudden and he's at the top of sport, uh, sport of boxing, and then a matchup with Gennady against either one of those guys is going to be uh, it's going to be a huge matchup. What are your thoughts when Canelo Alvarez, uh, Canelo's uh, promoter Oscar De La Hoya, says they're not ready for 160 pounds? He's a junior middleweight. They might test the waters. Now they're fighting at 165.5. I understand it's a big money fight, but let's speak the truth. They're contradicting themselves. Well, I, I think it's uh, different weights for different situations. Um, uh, now Canelo arguably is bigger than Gennady. You know, a lot of people are saying it was too small for Gennady. Now he's, he's uh, fighting at the super middleweight division. So, uh, but I have to say, you know, any discussions that I have had with a golden boy was never an issue with the weight. He was always going to be at 160 pounds if if that fight can be made. Um, again, uh, Gennady and uh, an Abel are 100% focused on Danny Jacobs. is clearly the, the toughest test of uh, Gennady's career. And uh, if he's successful, that's when, uh, you know, my job is to look forward and see the best matchups that we can make. And uh, whoever wins uh, either Chavez or Canelo is, is clearly going to be a, a, a terrific matchup for, for Triple G. Yeah, Canelo says Chavez Jr. in May, Triple G in September. Miguel Cotto in December. That's a busy schedule. What are your thoughts on that? Could that happen? I mean, that's... <laughs> look, that's... Uh, Canelo's one of the most marketable guys in the sport of boxing, and if he can uh, pull off something like that, that'd be a tremendous year. I know uh, Chavez wants to ruin his plans. I know Danny Jacobs wants to ruin Gennady's plans. Uh, certainly, if uh, Gennady and Canelo wins, uh, Gennady's going to want to ruin uh, his plan to fight uh, Cotto. If Gennady beats uh, Chavez... Uh, beats uh, Canelo, then uh, maybe the Cotto fight might might be out there, but you never know. Uh, he's all Gennady's always looked for the best matchups, the toughest matchups. Now he's finally getting to the point where uh, 
people, uh, and especially uh, that's why we have to give uh, David Lemieux a lot of credit. He was the first champion to get in the ring with Gennady. Um, we got to give Danny Jacobs a lot of credit, even though he was the mandatory. We've seen a lot of mandatories <laughs> move out of their position. We've seen a lot of champions uh, move out of the way of Gennady, even vacate titles uh, in order to avoid the fight. So we give Danny Jacobs a lot of credit. Um, he's never hesitated in wanting the fight. Gennady never hesitated in wanting the fight. And this is what the fans uh, respond to. They respond to two warriors, two huge knockout uh, punchers uh, fighting each other and, and uh, risking it all the line. You know, I, I said uh, at the press conference, there's no, there's no rematch clauses. Um, it's uh, the winner take all here. And Gennady worked so hard getting him all the, the titles, the WBA title, WBC title, IBF title, IBO title. I mean, all that work is uh, out the window if, um, if Danny Jacobs is victorious on uh, March 18th. And Danny Jacobs realizes that, you know, with, with one victory, all of a sudden he's at the top of the sport of boxing. So there's really a tremendous amount at stake, uh, not only for uh, Triple G and Danny Jacobs, there is for uh, Chocotito and Rungvisai, uh, for Carlos Quadras. If he doesn't win against Carmona, then he loses his position to challenge the winner of, uh, of uh, Quadras and Rungvisai. So there's really a uh, tremendous amount of uh, uh, risk involved in these fights, and that's what the that's what the fans like to see. Are we expecting uh, huge pay-per-view numbers for Golovkin versus Jacobs? You know, it's always hard to speculate on, on the pay-per-view numbers. Uh, we did well uh, the first time around. It was uh, his first pay-per-view uh, outing. David Lemieux was a champion, but he wasn't the most known over here. Clearly, Danny Jacobs has had a lot more exposure, uh, especially on premium cable uh, over here in the United States. Uh, he's got a big uh, fan base, a lot of uh, loyal fans. And uh, so we, we expect to do well on, on the show. But, uh, you know, it, it's really not about the pay-per-view numbers. It's more about just putting on the great fights. And, um, you know, then, then uh, we keep building uh, from there. Clearly, Gennady is in a completely different situation than he was when he challenged David Lemieux. That was the first time he ever sold out Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. This time we're expecting a sellout of Madison Square Garden. In between then, he sold out the form. Uh, against Dominic Wade, and he sold out the O2 arena against uh, Kell Brook. Actually, Kell Brook had a big fan base, or has a big fan base in the UK, and you can't say it's all all uh, Triple G, but uh, there's a pattern where every time he fights now, he's selling out arenas, and it's not just in one location. A lot of fighters like to just fight in one location, they have their fan base, they know the commission, they, they you know they're used to the hotels. You know, Gennady is. Uh, fought all over the world. I think uh, 11 countries he's fought over the world, and that's, uh, you know, over his career. And, and that's really the definition of a true world champion. And, and he wants to show he's the best. He doesn't care where he fights. He doesn't care who he fights. He just wants to show that he's the best. And right now, uh, those doors are all opening, especially if he's victorious against Danny Jacobs. And I think the, uh, the doors will open where, where no one really can deny, um, you know, where he's at in the sport of boxing. Hey, talk to us about Vladimir Klitschko versus AJ. That's a tremendous fight. I'm going to say that's a massive fight. It's uh, two, two huge heavyweights. Uh, they're almost identical size, 6'5", great physiques. Uh, two Olympic uh, gold medalists. Oh, it's in tremendous shape. Um, yeah, great shape. Vladimir trains extremely hard. I know uh, Anthony uh, must train hard. Uh, you know, I've got a great relationship with Eddie Hearn. We did the pro fight together. Um, and, and uh, you know, you talk about 90,000 tickets sold at Wembley Stadium. I mean, you can't have a better uh, response than that. You know, it's the uh, biggest fight in the history of the UK in terms of uh, ticket sales. And, um, you know, I think. Uh, an event like that is just a, a great international event when you have two great heavyweights uh, fighting each other that really becomes an international event and uh, and that's a fight that uh, I know a lot of people are looking forward to that's uh, I think that's one of those fights where whoever lands the first big punch might be the winner of that fight one of my last questions let's talk about a rising superstar in the cruiserweight division Alexander Usyk what are we expecting him back inside that ring oh, Usyk is a tremendous uh, fighter and tremendous talent. He uh, also Olympic uh, gold medalist in London, 2012. Um, I think he's kind of the sleeper of uh, of, uh, of all uh, of those uh, Olympic games. Uh, a lot of people talk about. I mean, clearly Lomachenko is a great fighter. You know, you have a lot of uh, great fighters coming out of there. But I think Usyk is uh, kind of the sleeper there, where he's got so much talent. He's got a great, marketable personality, um, and uh, he had a great debut on uh, on HBO. He fought a very tricky guy uh, with Machuno, Southpaw, 
short guy that could box. He was able to stop him, and uh, uh, I've been talking to uh, HBO and Peter Nelson, and they want to put him back on the regular HBO platform in uh, in April. So that's what we're uh, trying to work out right now, uh, as uh, as we speak. So uh, yeah, we we look for uh, great things for uh, for Usyk in the future. All right, thank you, Tom. Always a pleasure, my man. Thanks. Thanks.